When World War II began, Evansville, as well as the rest of the nation, answered the call to action in many ways. One of the most remembered was through rationing. This was an action directed from the federal level by the Office of Price Administration. It put in place a set of special rules to limit civilian usage of many materials and products. This allowed a maximum amount of resources to be used towards the war efforts. When the rubber producing regions of Southeast Asia were taken by the Japanese, America's rubber supply was a national concern. The limits started with rubber, which was a necessity for tires, boots, and tank tracks. Starting in January of 1942, the sale of new tires was banned. Each family was limited to one new set of five tires for their one allowed car, and any more than that must be purchased from the government. To slow the wear of tires being used, cars were limited to a 35 mile per hour speed limit on all roads. This was also enforced by a gasoline ration, which typically allowed families to have four gallons of gas a week through the use of the A stamp. In May of 1942, food rationing began. Ration books, initially known as sugar books, were given out with 28 stamps to start with. When the system was introduced in Evansville, elementary schools were closed for three days while the sites were used as distribution centers and the teachers were tasked with registering residents into the program. Sugar and coffee were the first two products rationed. In late December 1942, a much larger rationing system was announced. Restricted products would be assigned point values and consumers would be allowed a certain number of points to use each month. In late February, Evansville Elementary Schools closed again for three days to issue new ration books. The new list of restricted items ranged from canned soups and vegetables to meats and cheeses. These stamps were required in stores to be allowed to purchase rationed goods, which would eventually include many things such as sugar, paper, butter, meat, flour, and canned goods. While many Americans saw complying with the rationing system as their patriotic duty, there were some who sought to make extra money or obtain scarce items by doing business made outside of the OPA system. A black market, dealing everything from gasoline and tires to meat, sugar, and shoes plagued the nation. There was a steady stream of hearings and even arrests for merchants and consumers who circumvented the system. Store clerks and ad campaigns discouraged hoarding of scarce products. Some state legislators passed laws calling for stiff punishments for violators. OPA ad campaigns encouraged citizens to sign pledges promising not to buy restricted goods without the necessary ration points or paying more than the posted ceiling price. Slogans like, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without, hope to get people to do their part at the grocery store and gas station to win the war. After the war's end, nearly all government rationing programs were discontinued by December 1945. Sugar, the last ration product, was regulated until June 1947. This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.